Well, congratulations. You've reached the final stage of Tropic 101X. And now you have the opportunity to design your very own virtual ecology project where you will gather marine biological data and demonstrate your ability to interpret scientific results. You have undertaken quite a challenging journey to get here. Over the past six weeks, you've acquired a wide range of knowledge about the functioning and management of tropical coastal ecosystems. During the lectures and activities, we've explored how ecological processes create and connect seagrass, mangrove and coral reef ecosystems uh, that we see along tropical coastlines and which drive an extraordinary biodiversity that exists. We were introduced to the biology and ecology of seagrass meadows uh, in week two and their mangroves and the importance of these areas as nursery grounds for important food fishes and for the sequestration and storage of atmospheric carbon dioxide. We also learned that the exposure to high wave activity had a negative impact on seagrass growth, but conversely, it actually encouraged the growth of seaweeds or macroalgae. We also had an overview of the fundamental biophysical processes such as nutrient recycling and the basic modes of living, including autotrophy, heterotrophy. And now we know why tropical coastal ecosystems rely on microbial action, for example, to fix nitrogen. We examined the role of calcification in creating the three-dimensional structure of reefs uh, that you see when you go diving on a reef and which are so important as habitat for many different species. And we learned how factors such as temperature and uh, ocean acidity or pH can affect reef structure and growth. We saw how fish and other animals are an integral part of coral reef ecosystems and we delved into how those species and organisms interact with each other. We built marine food webs, we saw the intricate relationships between predators and their prey. And we discovered how the grazing by herbivores, like parrotfish, uh, is so important for allowing you know, coral reefs to remain in a coral dominated state and how fishing can reduce herbivory and cause coral reefs to undergo a phase shift and become overgrown by macroalgae. We explored many modes of reproduction of marine organisms and how the crucial timing of these events is important for maintaining populations. We then stepped up a level and looked at human inter interactions with tropical coastal ecosystems First, we considered the benefits that these ecosystems provide for the millions of people, and then we looked at how ecosystem services could be valued. And then we went on to, to, to consider how these valuable ecosystems, which is what we found, can be affected adversely by human activities at both local and global levels. We studied solutions to the problems, fisheries management, how land-based activities can be modified to protect marine resources, and we learned the principles of designing effective networks of marine protected areas. We also looked at how systematic conservation planning can be used to provide people with the best overall solutions to these complex resource management challenges. We also saw how climate change impacts might be mitigated and how state-of-the-art scientific tools can be applied to the study of tropical coastal ecosystems, including those complex computer models and remotely sensed imagery. Using practical examples, we also learned how to read a scientific research paper and how important it is for you to use your own judgment in determining how convincing the presented results are, just like a professional scientist would do. While focusing on experimental design, we examine the basic approach that scientists take to designing experiments so that they can test the influence of one factor versus another on the response vari variable, uh, such as how pollution, for example, may affect benthic habitats and communities. We learned the value of using control sites to make sure that any changes we observed in our data were actually caused by the experimental factor and not by something else. We also saw the value of conducting multiple replicate surveys, transects or quadrants to reduce the influence of random variables on your results. And you should now understand that there is a trade-off between precision 
and effort in scientific studies, and that gathering more data should improve the precision of estimates, but it will cost more and may take more time to do. And these are the considerations you need when you're designing your studies. We learned the importance of ensuring that background conditions, namely the conditions which your study is not focused on, were uniform across your experiment. Later, we saw how an experimental factor can have multiple levels. For example, if your experiment was designed to test how the factor sex affects an animal's body size, you would have two factor levels, male and female. We've also seen how factors can interact with each other such that one factor can affect your response variable in one way when it acts on its own, but can produce a different effect when another factor is also present. While studying field methods, we saw how a quadrant can be used to identify points on the seabed and provide data about the composition of benthic communities, such as the percentage cover of seagrasses, corals, algae, or even just dead space on a reef. We've also seen how projects like the Catlin Seaview Survey and the Global Reef Record are providing high quality data sets on ecosystems like coral reefs around the world that will give scientists a better global perspective on the health of those ecosystems. Well, now's your chance to bring together all of this amazing knowledge and insight by taking on the Tropic 101X Virtual Ecology Project. Your project is split into three consecutive tasks, each of which is e worth equal marks. When you start task one, you'll be presented with a briefing document, which will give you all the information you need to begin designing your survey program. You will be told what your objective is, and you will then be given a map, just like the one here, which you'll use to select your survey sites. You will be given step-by-step -step instructions that will guide you through what you need to do. Make sure you read all of these instructions carefully as they are important. If you're unsure of any of the aspects of the ecology contained in the task, you should revisit the, the relevant literature. You will be assessed on your ability to design the best survey program possible to get at the information and the problem that you've been given. Next, you'll move on to task two, where you'll be given some underwater images that were collected by the Catlin Seaview Survey team. Now, these images represent quadrants that you would gather in your survey program and will correspond to the sites you've selected on the map. Now, using the same tools and techniques used by professional marine ecologists around the world, you'll have the opportunity to demonstrate your ability to identify substrate classes, such as sponges, macroalgae, or different forms of coral. Your answers will be then compared to those uh, generated by real marine biology experts, which will give you an accuracy assessment of your identification skills. Well, finally, you'll come to task three, in which you'll demonstrate your ability to interpret scientific data. You'll be presented with sets of survey results and you'll be asked to come up with scientific explanations for those results. After six weeks of study, many hours of lectures, and I hope with a new insight into tropical coastal ecosystems, you're finally ready to tackle your final project. So take a deep breath and dive right in.